in a second, you'll see it soon. Little flash. Oh, there we go. <laughs> oh, okay. Alrighty. We all good? We good? Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. And uh, I'm just gonna welcome myself back because it's been, how long has it been? Like over a month now since I last made a video, even though I told myself I wanted to be more consistent and do this more regularly. Here I am. <laughs> so before I get into the actual video, I want to give a quick update of what actually has been happening in the last month or so. And if you guys want to skip all of that, I'll leave a time code in the video so you can skip straight to the video reaction and breakdown. Okay, so what has been happening for the last month or so in Melbourne, Australia? Well, first off, we went back into lockdown. What was meant to be a quick two, three week snap lockdown turned into uh, almost two months now, I think it's been. Uh, we passed 200 days of complete lockdown since the pandemic started. <laughs> During this time as well, a lot of projects have obviously been cancelled and delayed. Uh, some projects have still gone underway as we transitioned into working from home and filming in from home. One of which has been a pretty big project uh, that I've been working closely with a close client of ours, Short Story. The project was... Actually, I'm allowed to talk about it. Yeah, actually, I am allowed to talk about it. So the project that we're working on was with Star Wars, and it's a little bit daunting because working with Lucas Films, we have to send all of our pre-production work, storyboards, some um, shot lists, all of our uh, just all of our references and everything to them to get approved. And so we're directly working with them for this project, and we just didn't expect to go into lockdown. So there were some delays. There were some. Uh, transitional things that were happening to try and get the project to be able to be worked in my house without any assistance <laughs> whatsoever. Um, I had to sort of quickly redo my plans to make sure that I can film some of these stuff, uh, some of these shots by myself in my own home. When originally it was meant to be filmed with a crew, with assistants and with other people and in the studio. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much how that turned out. Uh, it was still really fun, but there were times where I was sort of pulling my hair out a little bit and just like stressing the hell out, trying to get that project done. That took a lot of time and I'm still working on it uh, just because of like some approval times have been a little bit delayed. Um, some things running in the background that you can kind of see media encoder, just exporting some stuff. Uh, so yeah, it's been a bit of a wild, uh, a wild time trying to adjust and not lose my mind. <laughs> I think it's already begun. But in saying all that, trying to keep sane, I think I'm doing okay. I've uh, been keeping contact with my friends. I'm also pretty blessed that, you know, I live with my girlfriend, so at least I'm not in lockdown alone. I have the gear and stuff with me, so if I do want to play around with stuff, I can. Uh, but yeah, that project in particular took away a lot of time from just a lot of other things in my life. I, I pulled two all-nighters, and I can't remember the last time I pulled two all-nighters. So that's been happening, obviously, again, with Mind Society Studios and the work we're doing, uh, just trying to figure out how to adapt that into this lockdown situation, which we've been in before, but trying to go at it in different ways and trying to find even more different solutions to that. Also on top of that, just trying to keep a lookout um, for not burning out. What I did last year was I was scrambling to find work, scrambling to find things to do, and that ended up compounding and stressing me out even further, which it didn't completely burn me out, but it made me feel really exhausted. So that's something to just keep note of and like try to be conscious of as well. Since I can't go out and climb, since I can't go out and dance, I've been trying to stay active. I've just been kind of like exercising and working out. Uh, but yeah, just trying to do things to try and keep myself occupied and not, again, just lose my mind. <laughs> that and I'm trying to plan some more videos to do that aren't just about AMVs because I do want to talk about other things that have been happening throughout my life and also what I am going through currently. Look forward to that kind of content as well. Oh, I almost forgot. So just before we get into the video itself, I figured out the reason why people's comments have not been showing up. It's because YouTube's algorithm will automatically filter out comments that have links. So it doesn't work all the time, which is why the majority of comments have still been coming through. But sometimes it will just pick a random comment and be like, nope, this is gonna be deleted. So if you want me to react to something and you wanna request something, uh, just type it in text and don't leave the link. But anyways, with that all out of the way, let's get into the video. This time it's going to be a bit more like a video reaction and breakdown because I'm going to be watching one of my own AMVs. This was brought up by 
Niwa AUN, and also, let me just double check that I'm getting the names correct here, and V Henrik. So Niwa AUN or Niwa, let me know if I'm pronouncing that correctly. <laughs> Said it would be cool to see me react to my own personal AMVs. When I read that, I was like, man, I can't pass this up because honestly speaking, I haven't really watched my own AMVs since I made them, which has been like, yeah, like over a decade. <laughs> and V Henrik suggested that I react to my Evangelion AMV, Eliminate, Extirpate, and Asphyxiate. That is such an edgelord sounding name. <laughs> Our teenage self thought that was really cool and really like mm, dark and edgy, but reading it now, I'm like, oh man, you're trying so hard. Again, I haven't watched this in so long, but I do remember this being quite a fast paced AMV, so forgive me if I stop and start in some random odd places. I'll probably rewind it back a little bit just so. Um, you know, I'm not just skipping all around the place. Another thing is this AMV was created as an AMV battle against Pinoy Word Up, uh, Pinoy Word, Pinoy, Pinoy Word 7 Up. I remember people were requesting that I battle him for quite some time and I don't know, we just kind of put it off and I wasn't really that excited about it. But one day it just, I don't know, suddenly we just went, you know what, let's just do this. Let's just have fun, make it happen. And for some reason, I don't know why, but I took it really personal through like once I start getting into the battle I don't know why I don't remember why maybe he said some things to me I, I actually don't remember it's probably somewhere in the comments section I don't know you can read teenage David's very cheesy comments and stupid stuff I don't know I probably said some really dumb things back then that's just maturity for you immaturity all right so with that out of the way let's get into the video Mm, yep. I need you. Please, Oscar, help me. <laughs> Oscar. This isn't funny anymore. Oscar, wake up! So I remember someone asking me why did I use the English dub rather than the Japanese dub because it's so fast paced the subtitles were getting in the way of like those like flash frames and I wanted people to purely focus on the visuals rather than like having to read subtitles. The other thing is I actually quite like the English dub for Evangelion. I thought all the voice actors did a really good job, um, especially the voice actor for Shinji. I feel like he really captured that teenage angsty sort of vibe. And with any English dub, they do change the lines a little bit to adapt it to an English translation. And I actually like some of the English translations, for example, when it says like, I'm so fucked up and stuff like that. The flash frames, there's that staticky stuff. So that static is actually something that I filmed off an old CRT TV. And I use that asset in quite a lot of my AMVs. And I think I still use some of that to this day, uh, just because of that static, like it's quite organic. Well, technically it's digital, it's from electronic appliance, but I just liked how that asset wasn't created using effects. It's from an actual, you know, device. So it always felt a bit more organic and authentic to me. And the other thing is with the color grading, when you compare this to my older AMVs, you can really see how I've come to understand a bit more about how color works and influences the visual narrative rather than just using it as a tool for eye candy. With the song, the song is actually called Sexy, <laughs> S-X-Y by the artist, I think it's ZXY X, or XYZ, XYZ? I can't remember, but it's all in the description of the video. And I remember I was in this phase where I was trying to look up as much independent artists and underground music as possible. And it was also during this phase where I was really listening to a lot of post-rock music. And I found this guy's album and I heard this track and I was like, oh my God, like it just sounds so aggressively violent. And it was just the right time because I rewatched this movie around that time when I heard that track and it just sort of clicked in my head like, what if I created a, a parallel universe narrative where Shinji's a serial killer and that song and Evangelion kind of clicked and that's how this AMV was born. The artist of the track also commented on the video and I was like, oh snap, I kind of felt bad. I didn't ask him for permission. So from that day onwards, I was like, should I start asking artists for the permission to use their tracks instead of just going like I like this track I'm gonna just chuck it into an AMV. Um, food for thought I guess. Anyways I'm gonna rewind back and we'll keep going. Please ask and help me. Oscar. This isn't funny anymore. Oscar wake up. So you can see in these shots I graded it to make it feel a lot more like it's a early morning or sunset and then in the next shots all of a sudden it's nighttime. 
So the idea for this was to make it feel like there's no sense of time in Shinji's mind. Like he's all over the place. It's almost like, has he been here the whole time? Or was this like the night before? Was this the morning after? Who knows? And to talk about the grading in this shot, so there's a technique called night to day where you turn a daytime shot into nighttime. So originally this shot would have been a bit more like, I can't remember what it is in the movie. I think it's just more like a pale daytime sort of look. And again, what I wanted to do was to create that shifting sense of time. And so I added more of a blue tint to it. I masked out the windows and sort of like darkened them to make it look like it's nighttime. But yeah, again, it just kind of shows more intention behind why I'm coloring the shots in those particular ways rather than just chucking all the different colors on like some of my older AMVs just because it looks pretty. Call me an idiot like you always do. Just say something, damn it. Wake up! So we can already see with these shots, there's this very grungy, dirty, kind of semi-glowy effect to it. And just again, like it really shows that I kind of gained a better understanding of how to utilize uh, visual aesthetics to better tell the story rather than just like thinking, yeah, this looks nice, let's just put that on top. Anyways, let's keep going. Bam! Again, first half, grungy sort of look. Second half, more clarity, showing that the first half was more like uh, a fabricated memory that Shinji has where he's like, oh, she must have killed herself. And then showing the reality of it by taking away that grungy sort of filter, it's Shinji who's the one that actually committed the murder and the crime. So the way that the shot of Shinji turning around and shooting was composed was pretty simple. There's a shot that is clearly of Shinji just turning around. Um, the hand is actually from Gendo, which was masked out and he's wearing the glove. Originally, I wanted to paint the glove out and make it skin colored so it just looks like a bare hand, but it ended up being too much work because we had a deadline for when we had to submit our AMVs for the battle. And so I just opted to keep the glove, but put it in later in the AMV as kind of like an Easter egg, which I'll talk about later as well. So you can see the pacing is quite fast, but the sense of structure in terms of telling the story, especially when I'm remembering my older AMVs have kind of matured a bit more where I'm being a lot more intentional with how each frame um, plays out and not just timing, but also conveying what I'm trying to tell with the narrative. And also the sequences of deaths correlate with the title of the video. So the first one with Dr. Ka Dr. Blah, Dr. Katsuragi, uh, she's eliminated. Um, and again, just goes back to my teenage brain going like, oh, this sounds really edgy and cool. But now I'm just thinking to myself like, man, you're trying so hard, you're trying so hard. Anyways, let's go back a bit. Okay, so what's really funny here is like that sort of moaning sound was in the music itself. And when I was putting this sequence together, I was just like, oh my God, like this fits so well. I still remember that. I was just like, this just clicked so easily. Man, that's such a violent sounding song. I still love this track, it's pretty awesome. So in this scene, I want to make it look like Shinji was very vindictive and jealous of Misato. I just realized I called the doctor in the previous scene Katsuragi. Sorry, I meant Ritsuko, jeez. Ritsuko Akagi, is it Akagi? I'm gonna look that up now. I'm getting all the names wrong, jeez. Misato, Misato Katsuragi. I think that's making myself look like an idiot. I mean, I already am an idiot, but Misato cuts it. Okay, all right, now that we got that out of the way. So I'm trying to make Shinji look like he's jealous of Misato. And to be honest, the scene kind of plays out pretty naturally. So I didn't really have to do too much to that. Um, and also the way that that scene was color graded in the movie has that sort of reminiscent sepia sort of tone to it already. So I didn't really have to touch that up too much either. <laughs> So she just got extirpated. 
Anyways, what I wanted to make that scene look like was more of a back and forth argument between Shinji and Misato. So during that scene, it's really Shinji just being all mopey and depressed and sad. And, and so what I wanted to do was heighten up that sense of conflict by splicing in more shots of where he's actually arguing back. The, the shot where he's falling back into the elevator and he smiles was manipulated. What I did was I just exported frame by frame on that shot and use the mesh to tweak his mouth into a smile. Because I was only using Vegas at this time, um, I just did a frame by frame uh, tweak in Photoshop instead. But yeah, if you were to do an After Effects, it's a lot quicker, it's a lot easier. You can just like, you know, select the part of the frame that you want to tweak, you know, use stuff like mesh warps or Bezier warps, and you can tweak it that way instead. The hand with a gun, exactly the same asset that I used where he killed um, Dr. I can't want to say Katsuragi, uh, Dr. Now I forgot her name. Jeez. <laughs> Ritsuko. Ritsuko. Dr. Akagi. Dr. Ritsuko Akagi. <sighs> All right, here comes the asphyxiation scene. So you can kind of see where I'm taking this narrative. It's framing Shinji as a bit more of a, un a bit more. <laughs> it's framing Shinji as a very unstable person who's very volatile, who gets easily agitated, who, yeah, again, is very unstable and it's just ready to explode at any moment. That camera movement was added in with Vegas as well. There are different plugins that you can use to create that. I think back then there was one from New Blue where that it could like, you could put in like different camera motions and like tweak the settings for that. You can do that in After Effects as well, but again in Vegas, using keyframes and then setting them to Bezier's and that way the motion was smoothened out. So you get this nice sort of like flowing, floaty kind of look. And I remember when I was watching this, I was like, something needs to feel really unsettling about it, uh, just to heighten that a bit more. And I noticed that adding in that camera movement, that unsteadiness, just added in that unsteadiness and instability to Shinji's psyche and this whole scene in general. And then with how I graded it, I wanted to create this vignette and that darken the edges so that the focus is a bit more focused on, again, the situation and Shinji's instability. I also wanted to add in that sense of rage building up. So I gave it a bit more of a harsher red, uh, hot tone to it. Usually I don't like cross dissolves and those types of things, but again, it just, the way that cross dissolves and dissolves in general work in film language is a sense of time shifting and changing. Like for example, when you fade to black and then it goes to another scene, it's almost like the day's ended. When you cross dissolve from one moment to another, it's almost like a montage, like we're flowing through time. So another thing that I felt like added to the instability of this sequence in general was having those dissolves to feel like there's no, sense of groundedness with the time and reality that we're in. I wanted to make it feel like we're slowly losing control. So let's keep going. Again, keeping those unsteady camera movements. Ah. Yep, so you can see in that frame just then, it cuts back to reality. So I'll go back to that shot. So the whole time it's like this dirty, grungy, sort of like, is this reality, is this not? But when he goes for the kill, it snaps back to, Snap back to spaghetti. Oh, there goes spaghetti. it snaps back to normal colors, which is like, again, reflecting on what I did early in the AMV, where when it's that realistic color tone, it's reality. And so him killing these people is telling you that he is actually killing these people. The different tones shows the different state of minds that Shinji is in, when he's killing these people or if he's imagining these scenarios and whatnot. So intentional placements of certain shots and scenes, that hand grabbing thing, I really wanted to put that there because again, it's just to reinforce the whole action of him using his hands to physically kill these people. And it's just, a way to emphasize that further and further. So with this whole sequence here, and you'll see when I keep playing as well, all these flashing frames and whatnot, most of them, if not all of it, is actually just from the movie and I haven't really edited or touched it up much. I might've cut things around and moved them a little bit, but other than that, I didn't really 
do some crazy amount of effects work here. This was mainly from the movie itself. And I remember getting a specific criticism about this. Like, I don't know, I can't remember exactly how it was phrased, but essentially what the vibe of that comment was, was I being lazy with this? Now here's the thing about being intentional with what you use and how you go about using it. If the anime or the source material has already done the work for you, why spend an extra amount of time just to showcase that I could do this effect myself. For me personally, if the source material has already done a bang up job in showcasing what I want to showcase, then I'm just gonna let it do its thing. If I wanted to tweak it, I would. But in this case, the movie just did a much better job. I actually did spend a tiny bit of time trying to replicate it and I couldn't do it because I was not good enough. So yeah, that's just my opinion about using the source material when it's available. Anyways, let's keep going down this rabbit hole. Okay, so <laughs> good frame to freeze on. Again, just being intentional with how uh, you splice and shift scenes around to tell a story. One of the biggest themes in the Evangelion series is like that phrase, uh, the hedgehog's dilemma, where you know people try to get close, but there are things about us that even though we want to be close, is still going to deter people or potentially hurt other people. But what I want to do again was to reframe that and recontextualize that where he wants affection, but he can't get it, and therefore he results to killing people because, da, crazy, you know? Even though most of the effects and all the stuff is from the movie itself, splicing it up and putting it in an intentional order to showcase the narrative is always very important. So since we're here on this frame of the hand, if you remember in the movie, the hand has a uh, jizz on it, <laughs> but, uh, what I basically did was I took the hand into Photoshop and I just cleaned it up for him because he didn't clean it up for himself in the movie. And then in the next couple frames, which I'll keep playing in a second, you'll see it soon. Little flash. Oh, there we go. <laughs> so what I did was I actually just changed the, uh, the jizz to blood. Oh God, that sounds so gross. And it's again, just flashing in between reality, uh, his psyche, instability, all that crazy stuff. And again, you're seeing the realistic color tones now. Oh, oh this is a pretty bad place to pause it. But since we're on this frame, if you look right on top of the hospital bed, you can see two pair of, uh, two pairs. You can see one pair of gloves, the white gloves. So that was a little Easter egg to make up for the fact that he's wearing a glove while going on a murdering spree. Let me go back a little bit. That's so fucked up. So yeah, there's that line. Yep. And the ending scene, pretty much just a still frame. Took that in the Photoshop, added these smear brushes on it, obviously red for blood, and then showing as time goes by, the blood drying and more victims um, being taken out. So yeah, that was that video. <laughs> hyper violent, hyper uh, edgy, and what else can I say to that? <laughs> when I think back to it, and I need to rewatch my old AMVs to see the real big difference and contrast, but from memory, it's nice to see my own progress in how I understood more about, you know, film language, uh, editing techniques, and how to structure things and be more intentional about what I do and how I use uh, the tools available to me to make sure that I'm making the most effective video possible. It is a bit fast paced, but I guess like it does work in making it feel very uh, uneasy because we don't really get time to sort of breathe other than the start and the finish. I do wish I made it a little bit more spaced out, but I don't know, maybe it had to be because of like the time limits and like I was drawing pretty close to the deadline. Um, I can't remember, but yeah, if it was a little bit longer, maybe even like 30 seconds longer, I feel like the pacing could have been spread out just a touch more, but that's just my own opinion. Maybe 
it's fine as is. If you guys enjoyed it, that's cool. But yeah, that was that video. Let me know if you guys enjoyed that and I'm happy to go through more of my stuff and break that stuff down. Again, if you guys have any other requests, whether it's AMVs or just anything else in general, music, what, I don't know, whatever comes to mind, let me know in the comment section below. Other than that, if you guys want to contact me as well, my socials, I have my socials on the screen and links in the description below as well. And just another reminder, <laughs> make sure you don't post links because YouTube, there's a chance that YouTube will delete your comments. And I do like to read your comments and reply to them as well. Other than that, hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys all next time. Wait. Oh my god, where's my cap? I've only got, I've got this cap. There's no cap on this one.